Hello, everyone. I'm so excited. I've got Stephen McKeon with us. He's the Chief Strategy Advisor for Security Token Academy, and we're talking about security tokens today. Now, this is such an interesting, novel, new space. People are just trying to figure it out. So if you're interested in issuing uh, a token uh, to raise money, you do not want to miss this episode because this is this is the nitty gritty, so stick around. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. This episode is made possible via the support of our sponsors, including Johnson & Johnson's Caring Crowd. Stephen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a thrill to have you. We're excited to learn from you and grateful that you would take the time. Um, we probably ought to start off with something really basic. Stephen, what is a security token? Sure. So a security token, uh, they go by lots of different names. Some people call them uh, tokenized securities, security token, crypto securities. Um, basically, the idea is it's a representation of value, and that could be a lot of different types of value. It could be a share of stock, it could be a piece of a building, it could be a bond. But basically, the representation of that value with a blockchain-based uh, token. So another name for them would be digital securities. What are the advantages of security tokens? Yeah, so the advantages are numerous. You could kind of think of this, um, in some ways, it's really an extension of uh, the crowdfunding movement. So you can take something with a relatively high unit cost, so say a building, right? It's it's challenging uh, for a lot of uh, retail investors or individual investors to get access to certain types of commercial real estate. So maybe you have to buy a REIT, which is a big basket of, of all kinds of different pieces of real estate, but it's very difficult to get exposure to say like the, the development down the block from you. So the idea is if, if you were to tokenize that asset, you're basically fractionalizing it, but also by building it on an interoperable system. So on building it on something like Ethereum, um, the idea is that the frictions to trade and to transfer are greatly reduced. And so that should allow uh, the markets to form that are deeper than the markets we have today, a little bit more liquidity, um, and generally speaking, should, should help to democratize finance. Where are we in terms of the development timeline on security tokens? Yeah, so we're still really in the early stages. Um, that you could think of the, the first tokenized security was uh, blockchain capital. So it's a venture capital firm. Venture capital is an asset class where normally investors are locked up for, say, 10 years. They make a commitment, it gets drawn down, and then, you know, the, the, the uh, startups don't exit uh, for many years after the initial investment. And so in the meantime, the investors are locked up. So what blockchain capital did is they said, what if we took a portion of our fund I believe it was $10 million. And they said, what if we created tokens for these so that people could buy and sell uh, the tokens creating a liquid market, um, but the, the VC firm blockchain capital didn't have to deal with redemptions. So the idea was kind of uh, lock in the capital, but don't lock in the investors. And that was in April, 2017. So almost just about two years ago. Now when that launched, there weren't a lot of, uh, a lot of the infrastructure wasn't built, right? So uh, sort of compliance platforms to make sure that the way these things trade is done in a compliant manner, you know, that KYC laws are being observed, that AML checks are being done. That infrastructure, as well as the exchanges where you would actually trade these, have really been built over the last 12 to 18 months and are just coming online uh, recently. So I would say we're, we're right at the very beginning of you know, what we think is gonna be a, a very large change in the way securities are documented and traded. This is kind of an exciting change. And, and uh, you know, people have been excited about blockchain technology in the abstract, or even as it applies to cryptocurrencies, I guess in specific uh, for a number of years, but uh, a lot of the enthusiasm for cryptocurrencies has waned, uh, even though uh, an investment in Bitcoin from seven years ago is a great investment today. Uh, 
an investment in Bitcoin 18 months ago, not so great, right? Right. So asset prices have uh, come down quite a lot uh, for many of the cryptocurrencies. You know, we view it as um, we view it as one ecosystem to some degree. So if you look at where most of these security tokens are being built, they're being built uh, largely on platforms like Ethereum. Now, the price of Ethereum has come down a lot, but it's also a very important project uh, for these regulated products that will be traded on top. So the price of a security token shouldn't be tethered to Ethereum, right? You're absolutely right. So even though it's built on Ethereum, you could think of Ethereum as really just doing the record keeping for the security token, right? It has a separate ledger, just like a, a stock registry, you know, if it weren't on blockchain. And so the, the value of a security token, you know, whether it's a share of stock or a bond uh, or a real estate, is, is really tied to the underlying asset, right? So to the extent those are traditional assets that are being tokenized, we'd value them in much the same way we'd value them if they weren't represented uh, with the token. The idea is the token is really just a different digital wrapper that enhances certain features around trade and transfer. So tell us a little bit about Security Token Academy. Absolutely. So I've been working with Security Token Academy uh, for a couple of years. They originated out of the crowdfunding uh, space and they really saw the writing on the wall in terms of uh, much of these, much of this effort uh, being represented by uh, tokens rather than traditional crowdfunding. And so it's really a place where investors and issuers and really anybody interested in security tokens can go to get more information. So some of the things you might find there are um, interviews with the corporate members. So these are the people that are actually building out the infrastructure that are doing the issuance that can sort of give you a, a frontline view. They've got something called the Security Token Edge, which is a newsletter you, you can subscribe to. It's, it's free, it comes into your inbox. Um, and then something called the, the Digital Wrapper, which is really a series of interviews, again, with, with industry participants. I'll mention one other thing, which is they've initiated uh, a second brand called CREST. So this is, that's an acronym, Commercial Real Estate Powered by Security Tokens. And this is really going to focus primarily on the real estate asset class, uh, specifically and provide content uh, around that space. It seems to me, and I don't want to get too, too distracted by this uh, nuance, but it seems to me that uh, crowdfunding has been perhaps most successful in real estate and that tokenizing it is really an exciting nuance because uh, tokens are such a, a perfect way of dividing up a real asset like a building or a lot or a, an apartment building. I mean, it seems like the perfect application for selling shares in real estate. What, what's your take from where you sit? Yeah, so it, we really, we view it as like a, a more powerful version of, of crowdfunding to some degree, right? So security tokens make it very easy to fractionalize and to represent and to trade an asset, whether it's, it's real estate or anything else. But I would agree with you, real estate is a perfect use case because real estate is expensive. So if you want $1,000 or $1,200 of, of exposure, it can be challenging to get that on, on, a, on a specific asset. And so we really view it as, you know, crowdfunding had all the right motives and certainly laid the foundation for what we're seeing with uh, security tokens. But what we can do with this new technology is actually enhance secondary markets, which are a really key piece to to see crowdfunding um, kind of grow up and move to the next level. So th this would be, for instance, a way, our, our, our audience is sort of a social impact focused audience, but this might be a way to uh, finance a uh, social enterprise, a, uh, an affordable housing project, all kinds of different things that would have social impact could be financed using a security token, right? That's right, actually there's a lot of interest um, from sort of social impact sorts of groups. And so we see it being used for everything from green bonds um, to, as you said, there, there could be, you know, specific housing projects uh, that are financed in this way. And really even it also works for charity, right? So the idea is like, 
Um, perhaps you donate to a certain cause and you receive tokens and then those tokens allow you to have some sort of interaction with the, with the charity on an ongoing basis. So there's a lot of use cases around social impact. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Stephen, as you reflect on your career, what are you most proud of having accomplished? I think, you know, it's interesting you asked this because I was just speaking to a crowd the other day and I was saying that, you know, I think security tokens are going to be the, the defining feature of my career. I've been involved with emerging technologies since the beginning of my career. I started my career in Silicon Valley right during the dot-com boom. You know, I was involved with um, uh, another software startup that began in 2012 and, and later exited. But as I looked at this technology in particular, I think in terms of the total impact uh, it could have really on society and the way finance works, is probably going to be the thing I'm, I'm most proud of in my career. And so I think, you know, like what I guess what I'm most proud of so far is, is really just helping to, to get the word out about what's going on uh, with this technology and the impact that it can have. What, uh, what's the most important lesson you've learned over your career? So the most important lesson, I would say, doesn't have anything to do necessarily with security tokens, but it has, uh, it's basically uh, don't quit or persistence. And it was something that my parents taught me from an early age, you know, whether it was, um, you know, in hockey or any sort of uh, sport that I was involved in or activity, you know, everybody runs up against these times where things get frustrating and you think like, I can't do this one more day. And what I've learned is the answer is you almost always can do it one more day and you should do it one more day and persist. And sometimes things don't work out, but the, the, I guess the lesson is don't make rash decisions around, around uh, quitting, right? So always try to persist and then if it looks like it's not working, you know, make a transition plan. And so I've tried to, to live by those lessons and it, it served me well. As you uh, think about your career and you kind of teased us a little bit on this topic, but why did you feel drawn to crowdfunding? Why did you feel drawn to security tokens? What's the appeal to you? So I've, uh, I've spent my career, you know, in technology, but also in finance. So I've been a finance professor at the University of Oregon. And so when I first got involved in blockchain, I was very interested in valuation models. And, you know, back then it was really just Bitcoin. Um, and then Ethereum came on the scene as well. And we started thinking about why would these things accrue value? How much value might they accrue? What sorts of models should you use? And as the space developed, I really just drew on my experience, which was studying securities. I've written papers on employee stock options and debt contracts and all kinds of different securities. And it was just like a natural uh, evolution to try to merge that prior experience with this amazing new technology I was encountering. And I realized very quickly that, that it was going to have an impact and that I was in a unique position having a lot of experience in, in sort of both spaces uh, to really, you know, start writing about the topic and start educating people about the topic. And so that's really what drew me in. What are you, uh, what is your superpower, Stephen? My superpower? I don't know if I have a superpower, but I guess it would probably be, uh, it would probably be a high tolerance uh, for, being able to persist at things. So kind of, as I mentioned earlier, you know, what I found is, you know, people always talk about uh, grit and, and I have two kids. And so I think about like, you know, how can I, how can I teach them uh, grit and, and, and persistence? And what I've realized is that um, it was interesting. This was a, a lesson that was given to me by um, a track coach. So here in Oregon, you know, we call it track town USA, Eugene, Oregon. And so we have a lot of track events here. And, and I talked to a track coach and I said, what is it that makes a runner really special? Like, what is it that gives them that, that grit? And, and they said, it's the ability to tolerate discomfort, right? Because whether it's running or some other uh, athletic achievement or, or also just mental discomfort, right? Um, we all kind of bump up against this place where something becomes uncomfortable. And I guess my, 
my superpower is being able to tolerate a high level of, of discomfort to kind of like push through those difficult spots um, to kind of get uh, to an achievement that you've been working for for a long time. Fascinating. Fascinating. Well, uh, Stephen, I sure appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Before you go, would you take just a minute and tell people how they can learn more about uh, Security Token Academy and how they can connect with you? Absolutely. So you can follow me on uh, Medium or, or Twitter. That's often where I, I publish uh, a lot of the work on this particular space. It's at SB McKeon. Um, and as far as Security Token Academy, you just Google Security Token Academy, you'll, you'll find our website and you'll see the places where you can subscribe to the newsletter and download the videos um, and everything else that you need from there. Fantastic. Well, again, Stephen, thank you so much for being with us today and we uh, wish you every luck in your work. All right, thank you so much for having me. All right, let's do some good. At Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. Thank you for listening. Devonthorpe's mission is to end extreme poverty, improve global health, and mitigate climate change before 2045 by finding and sharing the stories of those who are doing the most good. You can join with other listeners to accelerate Devon's mission by visiting helpdevon.org right now.